and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and thanks very much for joining me for our regular solar monthly PV update. So if you're new to the channel, every month we do an update on the solar PV performance of the system here in Worcestershire, UK. If you want to know more about the system, the setup we have, you can click the card just here to get more information, of the whole setup, everything we have going on and how it's working. And again, if you're someone that watches on a regular basis, thanks very much. But regardless, please like this video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It'd be really, really appreciated. So without further ado, let's jump into the solar PV performance for June 2022. So I don't know about you, I'm sat here doing this video at the beginning of July. It's a little bit uh, behind schedule and it's really, really hot. So we'll try and crack through things and give you the information that you're looking for. So. Let's start off with the actual solar PV production for June 2022. So the system produced 1.13 megawatt hours of solar, so uh, yeah, a massive amount of electricity for us for the month of June. Uh, we couldn't consume all of it, so we did export a little bit back to the grid, which was 130 kilowatt hours, um, but we did still need to import some for the grid for charging cars and what have you and that was 370 kilowatt hours of electricity. We'll talk to you a little bit about how much that costs in a moment on the Octopus Go tariff um, that we are on. But the other thing I'll mention is, even though we've got lots of solar PV production, I still do have our eddy set onto a timer. So during the off-peak uh, times, it will still heat up a bit of hot water just to make sure that the baths and the showers are all good, even though they typically are, uh, having issues in the summer, I leave it on the timer just so that I don't forget to turn it on in the in the colder months actually and then I get moaned at. So yeah, the, the system production was really, really good and again, me and my wife both work from home so we do have lots of servers and computers and stuff running which is in general we are a high consuming household if you haven't seen our videos before. So let's talk about some of the best and worst solar PV days for the month of June 2022. So the best day was actually on the 21st of June, we generated 55.571 kilowatt hours of electricity. The highest export day we had was actually right at the beginning of June on the 2nd, where we exported 17.541 kilowatt hours. And our highest import day and, and actual total consumption day was also on the 21st, the day that we had our best generation. Now, I think that's mainly because we were obviously probably doing some car charging and what have you. So we used a whopping 79.722 kilowatt hours of electricity in total on the 21st. So pretty big, um, but again, two electric cars, um, hot water, dishwashers, all sorts of stuff are, are happening. Obviously we've got servers that are running 24 by seven in the house as well. Now I'm always interested to see how well our system compares to yours. So please, if you're willing, um, give some information down in the comments of what setup you have and how well your system performed uh, for 2022 in June and also how it compared to other years. Interestingly, June 2022 was the best solar production June that we've had um, ever in the system so far. I think we're hitting into year five now. So last few months, it's actually been not as good as previous years, but uh, June has been pretty awesome. So if we talk about uh, the electricity bill, again, as mentioned, uh, we still imported 370 kilowatt hours. I'm with Octopus Energy on the Octopus Go tariff. Uh, if you're looking to move energy provider, I do recommend uh, Octopus Energy, and there is a link in the description that you can click. And if you use my link, both you and I both get 50 pounds credit to our bill when you sign up. If you do have an electric vehicle, you can obviously also then sign up for the Octopus Go tariff, which is a peak and off peak tariff. I think at the moment I'm paying about 31 pence per kilowatt hour during the day. I think it has gone up quite a bit with the energy prices going up, but only paying 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour off peak, which is basically where I use nearly all of my electricity very much, very much, very little gets used um, during peak time. So actually my bill uh, for the previous month, uh, well for June, was 44 pounds and seven pence for the whole month and our average price per unit was 8.41 pence per kilowatt hour. Again, most of the stuff is used off peak, charging the cars, heating up hot water, and filling up the power if the sun's not gonna do it for us. 
So in terms of related things related to the billing, um, obviously we got in, as mentioned before, right at the end of the feeding tariff. So for all the solar we generate, we do get some feeding tariff benefit as well. So in terms of our kind of into our payback pot for our solar for the month of June, we get the following. So for feeding tariff generation, we get paid £47 and 12 pence. Then for our deemed export, we get paid £31 and 47 pence. And then obviously we generated that 1.13 megawatt hours of electricity, which means we didn't need to buy that from the grid. So that saves us having to purchase £307 and 80 pence worth of electricity from the grid. So for the month of June, there's a total of 386 pounds and 39 pence that we don't have to, well, that goes back into our payback pot. Uh, again, as we get into, I think September is kind of my anniversary of my solar. So then I'll give an update on where we are um, with the payback. Obviously with energy prices keep on going up, the payback is just getting quicker and quicker. If he wasn't on the feeding tariff or I wasn't in the feeding tariff, for that 130 kilowatt hours that I exported, on a seg um, kind of export tariff, I would have got paid around £7.15. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but as I say, every month we try and minimise any exporting we do. So everything goes into cars, batteries and hot water uh, outside of obviously running the house and powering all of our kit. So now let's jump on to how we kind of use the energy from the power wall, uh, from the eddy to heat hot water and the zappy for charging our electric cars. Okay, so if we start off with our Tesla Powerwall 2, uh, we did uh, pretty well actually in June. So we managed to get 316.8 kilowatt hours of energy out of the Powerwall into powering things, obviously mainly when the sun has gone down, and 89%, so 281.95 kilowatt hours of the energy from the Powerwall over the month all came from solar surplus, so not having to buy from the grid. So a very small amount came from the grid for the power wall, which is always really good. Now, if we look at the Zappi, so how we charge our two electric cars. So for the total of the month, we used 474.93 kilowatt hours electricity charging cars, and 53% of that came from the grid. So that's 250.48 kilowatt hours, and then 47%, so 224.45 kilowatt hours, came from solar surplus so most of the time as you can tell there we do try and charge up from um, solar but if we've got trips coming up where you know we can't rely on kind of any surplus during the day we do still plug in at night um, for making sure we've got full batteries for the next day for our journey and then finally for our eddy which is what we use to heat hot water in our immersion tank um, we put in 114 kilowatt hours of electricity into heating up water all from that solar so you know again pretty good and again as i mentioned there is some that we get from the grid uh, each night just to make sure that things are, are tip top and there's going to be plenty of hot water for baths and showers in the morning and what have you so i hope that helped and is of interest again if you're looking to move energy brighter consider oxford's energy and the link below uh, please feel free to share in the comments uh, your solar performance for June 2022. Let us know what kind of system you have, what your generation and export was. If you want to join the Spectrum Geeks community, we do have a Discord channel where it's free to join, just kind of hang out and talk to other like-minded geeks. But until next time, that's it. Please again, consider liking, subscribing. If you haven't done already, take care of yourself and tell the next one. Bye for now.